So we're going to talk about this, of course, happened over the weekend. UFC 270. Um, obviously, the main event being Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gain. Cyril, I've been watching him from afar for a while. I've watched his debut in the UFC and I immediately thought, okay, this guy has the potential to be UFC heavyweight champion. He is legitimately one of the most scariest heavyweights I've seen in that he has an ability to strike um, on his feet like a middleweight like a lightweight it's just weird to see people that size you know 220 plus pounds 230 pounds whatever it is be able to kind of throw spinning wheel kicks and whatnot have that weird muay thai stance um like just it's just crazy it's just really scary and i thought okay cool if there's one person that's going to be able to maybe defeat um francis and garner and to go and especially as a heavyweight in that regard since he's champion would be a serial game because he's just so skillful and has a little bit more precision in what he does and what we saw, I think a lot of people thought the same thing, because if I'm not mistaken, I think betting wise, he was a favorite, Cyril Gain, um, Cyril Gunn, Cyril Gain. But Francis shocked the world, man, myself included. And he's really changed my perspective on a lot of things that I kind of hold dear. One of them being this idea that people don't really change. I think only, I know that only for myself to be true, because I know how hard it has been for myself. And I would think, I would like to regard, yeah. Yeah, I know how it has been for me to change and I would describe myself as somebody who's quite willing to change like I always put myself in uncomfortable positions I always try and learn new things I'm open to criticism I'm self-reflective I'm really critical you know to myself for the most part I hold myself to a really high standard when I fall short of it I beat myself up more than anybody else will beat myself beat me up um I'm very sensitive to that kind of thing and I always want to improve in every aspect of my life blah blah blah, blah, blah. you know the common thing but I'm also very conscious that some people, despite wanting to change, don't. Because once we reach a certain age in life, that change just becomes more hassle than what it's worth. And sometimes the people that we surround ourselves in terms of our friends and colleagues, they might like us enough to just put up with the stuff that they don't like about us. Just because they like us enough and they love us so much. And that can sometimes give you the false impression that you don't need to change either. So in actuality, if you look at life and the way life sets up, unless you are down to your bare bones or you're in a position where you clearly, life just keeps smacking you in the face that you need to change. Humans don't really do change. If you give people an excuse to be shitty, they will just continue to be shitty until it becomes, um, it, it becomes, it becomes detrimental to their maybe quality of life or their career options or whatever it may be. And I feel like sometimes in the UFC, when it comes to fighters, when they have a particular skill set, it's very difficult to tell them, hey, go and improve this other skill set when that one skill set is what got them to where they are. So Francis Ngannou has this freakish power in his fist. He's able to flip and knock people out and send them to the moon, right? With his hands, he punched a car, all this sort of crazy stuff, right? He looks like a physical specimen, a beast in all intents and purposes. To then tell him that he needs to improve his grappling and his grappling defense and maybe improve his wrestling in general, it just seems to be an unnecessary thing because clearly he's been able to get to a really high level in the UFC doing what he's doing. And also, for the most part, you can't teach people to have knockout power. It's something you're just born with. From what I know, again, limited um, martial arts experience. I did um, Muay Thai for a couple of months in the kickboxing gym that I got a free token. No, that I bought a token for from Groupon. So my experience, I'm talking honestly from a real casual. But I know from what I've heard people say in training gyms and whatnot, that power is something that you just got given with. You can obviously train your precision. And if you believe the comment, if you're kind of the Connor added just things about, you know, uh, precision is power. And if you hit somebody in the right spot, it's lights out. But that freakish ability, that kind of, um, you know, that kind of uh, Deontay Wilder, I touch you, lights out. That kind of Francis Ngannou, I touch you, lights out. That thing is just your, either you have it or you don't. And, for the most part, most people that Francis Ngannou is going to fight, if he just hits them once, it's over. So you need to have a really good chin in order to kind of survive what he's going to give you or be, you know, or be kind of avoidant or, you know, whatever it may be. But then if he's able to add wrestling to his game, he then takes a fight to another level because of how big he is and stuff. He can just dominate the fight in that regard. And if he just improves tiny bits of it and you come out of the clench and he hits you, then it's lights out. So that obviously makes him a freakishly good all around MMA um, martial artist, right? In terms of mixed martial artists, right? But he's older. 
right? He, he, I think he only got into the UFC, what, the last five years or so. So to expect him to train those skills and develop them over time is just difficult. But somehow he did. And he was so impressive against Cyril Gain that it was really scary to see how good he's been so far in the last, what, three years that he's basically improved his grappling and his wrestling. It's clear the training he's been doing, the work he's been doing in the gym, um, the assistance he's been obviously getting from Kamaru Usman and his coaches. It's clear to see. And again, it's something that was clearly they saw as a weakness and they tried to improve it and they've done it diligently because I could imagine maybe a couple of months you can maybe you know decide to do some wrestling drills then you get tired like oh fuck this I've got it down pat but he's clearly doing it in some sort of combination with his regular work to the point where he's confident enough to go for takedowns especially later on in the fight where he was losing a few rounds and in order to kind of get himself back onto some level of parity he just turned it into a wrestling match and I was like oh my god he was doing sweeps and reversals and stuff pinning Cyril Gain to the cage there's a moment where he was trying to go for a triangle arm bars like got, like i was like oh my god this is so cool to see and, and again when you consider all the baggage around the fight the fact that they used to be former sparring partners the fact that france is going through this contract dispute with um with what you might call it with the ufc the fact that dana white the chicken shit cunt decided to leave and didn't wrap the belt around Cyril Gunn's waist because you know clearly he's got the leverage now in terms of his negotiating power so much weight has been added on top of that thing that you know it, it was probably quite stressful to prepare for this fight more so than any other fight because there's a lot on the line um, because now you know the fight that he's talking about going to boxing and fighting Tyson Fury is more lucrative now him maybe going to another organization has increased his price him signing on has increased his, like everything is up and up for him but it's all obviously in order to get that leverage in sports like in any form of sports really in the world professional sports you have to win winning gives you leverage but of course in the UFC the consequences are really bleak because if you lose a couple you're basically out you're done it does not come back from it so the fact that he was able to win against such a crazy talented fighter like a Cyril Gain and again in Cyril's case it's disappointing too because the level of the UFC now is at a point where there are no gimmies unless you're fighting people outside the top 15 everyone's lethal on their day everyone's dangerous and sometimes it's even harsher at the top five because sometimes you're just unlucky that the person that's number one is just a tiny bit better than you five ten percent better but if they weren't around you would definitely be champion and there's few of those people in those kind of champions around especially when Khabib was around if Khabib is like you're seeing it now with Khabib in that division the, bar, the belt's probably going to get passed around a lot in my opinion between um the top five because clearly they're on the same level but Khabib was just a level above them all um but yeah that aside great to see Cyril I mean so great to see Francis win that way it's I think in that fresh I, I think I prefer Francis to win this way because it kind of you know puts away my idea that you can't learn anything new when you're older some people don't want to learn anything no if you do want to learn it and you're diligent enough and you want to do the work you can and it's also good for him and his story that he was able to triumph over the setbacks that he's had in his career and kind of come back and defend the belt this way because everyone knows he can knock people out but if you can defend about this way it's obviously going to give you it's going to give you encouragement to go back into the gym and continue your training because if you're already this good three years in at the age of 35 36 whatever he is imagine how he's going to be a year on uh, two years later down the line especially for somebody that doesn't take that much damage right he doesn't get hurt he doesn't get hit too tough he seems to have a solid chin I can't picture him getting knocked out. I can picture him getting chokehold, sorry, getting strangled and whatnot, or being compromised so he can't fight. Like, imagine if he was fighting a John Jones, you know what I mean? He'd be going for that knee all the time or whatnot. But I can't imagine him getting knocked out. He doesn't have a knockout head to me. He has maybe a head that could maybe pass out from getting choked, but I can't imagine him getting knocked out. So he's in a really good position. So big up Francis Ngano, um, UFC 270, UFC 270. He smashed it. He did a ting. And now hopefully he's in a position where he can negotiate something nice for himself when it comes to the UFC. But Dana running off and not giving him and not putting a belt around him was such a pussy move. And again, it goes to show how much of a piece of shit that guy is. I cannot wait until a day when he is no longer in charge of the UFC or no longer, you know, the, the, the front facing person in that regard. And they maybe go in another direction because the UFC will never get to a level that they want to get to. Somebody is unprofessional. They know why it doesn't exist. Somebody that has clear biases, who's clearly bitter about some people, favoritism, who has vendettas against some people. It's just that's not how you run a sporting organization, especially when it's not one person in control. Maybe split the hate. 
you know, decim um, fucking disseminate the hate between a few people in the boardroom, but don't just have it one person be the guy that's basically deciding who eats, who doesn't get title shots, who does get title shots, who's deserving, who isn't deserving. But this is a shot, like this, this shot. When he, I think um, Cyril went for like a, look, it's like, look at the faces in the crowd. I think Cyril went for like a, um, I think, think Cyril went for some sort of kick. Did he go for a kick or something? And he caught him and then lifted him up and slammed him on the floor. Like, we've never seen this from flipping uh, Francis and God. Look, look at all the faces in the crowd. Look at the faces. <gasps> like, imagine people, Im imagine what it sounds like hearing heavyweights punch each other. Then imagine a heavyweight that looks like Francis picking up a heavyweight that looks like Cyril and then slamming him on the floor like this. Like, God almighty. No wonder everyone's in the crowd's like, look, this guy here in the back is just like, oh, never day in paradise. Not really flinching, but everyone's so fast flinch. Look at the mouths. <laughs> You're the hand here. So incredible, honestly, man. I loved it. What an amazing fight, man. What an amazing fight. 